Audiences have always been captivated by the great Hollywood romances, the classic couples whose chemistry on the widescreen and in real life is electric and enduring. Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. And who could forget Bogey and Bacall? Or Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor? Well, this summer, another charismatic couple is in the spotlight. Jen and Ben. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Two big stars who met on the set and made headlines worldwide after a whirlwind romance. Do they have the stuff and the staying power to become another classic couple? Jenny from the block was now Jenny with the rock. He brought her to his childhood home in Massachusetts. There were candles, rose petals everywhere, very romantic, her song playing. And of course, there was the 6.1 carat pink diamond from Harry Winston. News of the engagement became fodder for an overzealous paparazzi. From the very beginning of their relationship, Ben was buying her jewelry, like insane diamonds, and buying each other matching cars. And not just cars, Bentleys and Rolls Royces. He was known to have bought her mom and her sister Rolexes. It was out of control spending. But by August 2003, the Benefer Union was beginning to show cracks. Reports of Ben's excessive gambling and a night with strippers made headlines, just as Geely got trashed by critics and grossed just $3.8 million, which was close to the budget of their September 14th wedding a ceremony they canceled just days before blaming excessive media attention. A brief breakup and quick reconciliation followed. But by mid-January, the buzz began to build once more. Where was Jen's 6.1 carat engagement ring? Why was Ben alone in Paris? Why had J-Lo spent an evening with old flame Sean Puff Daddy Combs? He just wouldn't get to the altar. And finally, when they broke up in January, she had finally realized, you know, this guy's never going to marry me. Welcome to part three of the Jennifer Lopez series. In part one, we took a deep look into Jennifer's upbringing, childhood, and early rise to fame. We also discussed Jennifer's marriage to first husband, Ohani Noah, and her rumored affair with hip-hop mogul, Diddy, that allegedly tore her first marriage apart. In part two, we cover Jennifer and Diddy's high-profile romance, their shocking breakup, and Jennifer's sudden marriage to husband number two, dancer and choreographer, Chris Judd. In this episode, we will discuss Jennifer and Chris's whirlwind love affair and how it quickly fell apart when actor Ben Affleck came into the picture. But before we dive into the Benefer Frenzy 1.0, let's first thank our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a murder mystery game set in the 1920s. The main character, June Parker, travels back to her homeland to investigate the murder of her sister, Claire, and Claire's husband, Harry. According to police, Harry shot Claire and then turned the firearm on himself. But this version of events doesn't sit well with June, so she goes on a mission to investigate this case and track down the real culprit. In each scene, there are hidden objects that you need to find that give you clues to help solve the mystery. When you complete a scene, you'll earn Starbucks for every star you receive within that round. Starbucks are rewards that allow you to build your own island, advance in the game, and unlock new features. Despite its dark storyline, June's journey is filled with bright colors, appealing aesthetics, and diverse characters. It's stimulating, it's fun, and it's worth your time. Download June's journey for free by clicking the link in the description box or scanning the QR code on screen. June's journey is available on Android and Apple devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. Thank you, June's journey, for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get started. On September 29th, 2001, Jennifer Lopez and Chris Judd wed in a secret ceremony at a private estate in Calabasas, California, in front of 170 guests. The couple, who met on the set of Jennifer's music video, Love Don't Cost a Thing, back in November of 2000, had been together for six months when they tied the knot. 
Jennifer, who was previously in a very tumultuous relationship with Diddy, found comfort in the arms of Chris. He was kind, gentle, loving, and supportive. According to Jennifer, she felt safe with Chris, and marrying him was like a fairy tale. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Jennifer said, quote, He's like my peace. He just brings me stability in a way that I really needed. How you been? It's good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you since you got married. Let me see the ring. Let me see the ring. Well, this is not the whole ring. This is the ring. Oh, let me see that. Well, let's see. Can we get that? Oh, that's great. Very nice. Very nice. This is just a, a fakey. Now, how did the wedding go? Was it fun? You have a good time? Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful yeah. wedding. Yeah. Quiet, not, you know, but, but, but nice. And were you, were you nervous? <laughs> I was very nervous. Did you she get, I was nervous. Did you get some privacy? Did the press drive you nuts? They really she didn't could. drive us nuts. You know, um, actually, we had really good security who helped kind of keep everything low key. A few people, I guess, tried to climb up a mountain or something and get it. You know, they're so extra. But, but, you know, it was fine. Now, did you dance all night? The whole yes, we danced. I was really nervous at first. And then. At once I walked down the aisle in the ceremony and that whole thing, it was great. Yeah. And then it was fine. Now, see, was it intimidating? Because you're a great dancer. And, of course, your husband, Chris, is like a professional choreographer. He's a dancer. For, yeah, yeah, can yeah. anybody else even dance? He must have been... We have a lot of dancer friends. So he seems like a very nice guy. He you know, is. Have him. Yeah, I should hope so. <laughs> now, have you, nice. have you, have you like, cooked a dinner yet? or anything like that? Have you cooked a meal for him? Have you done any of those kind of things? I wash dishes and stuff. Yeah, I wash <laughs> So have you done any of that? Because you know, so you know, like a guy sometimes will carry over the threshold, and you make a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You, do you know how to cook? Are you a cook? Yes, Can I do cook? know how to cook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you seem very cook. defensive. Oh, you know, you seem very defensive. No, because everybody assumes that I don't cook. No, I don't assume that you don't cook. See, because I know I come from an ethnic background, also, and you have to know how to cook. No, you do. You do. We are taught to, to take care of our men well. No, and not we only men, just to cook. I mean, yeah, just no, the family. Also, you know, yeah, yeah the family. We're raised. As, as, yeah. You know, that's how I was raised anyway. So. Like, do you have a special thing? I I do like um Puerto Rican food, and I also do a pretty good Italian food once in a while. Well, not no, say no. Oh, now we can talk. Yeah. Italian. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but is there, have you discovered anything now you're married, you live together? Is there anything like it's one meter than the other? Did you find any little flaws? Any underwear on the doorknob? You know, what's going on? Oh, God, no. Um, no, no not, not yet, not yet. He's just only missed a, a couple months. If you just missed a yeah. he doesn't have any little, no, he's, little. I, I don't, I don't talk about him a lot in public, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. see, you're smiling. <laughs> Please, okay. I'll no, but see, no, I'm, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing you, but I'm very happy for you. You have, you, you. you have like a nice married lady joy. <laughs> we'll talk more with Jennifer right after this. More with Jennifer Lopez. Right? Following their lavish wedding, Jennifer and Chris departed to Italy, where they would stay at Donatella Versace's villa to enjoy their honeymoon. But despite a honeymoon being an intimate time for newlyweds to connect and relax, Jennifer and Chris's honeymoon was anything but. Instead of the couple enjoying one-on-one -on -one time, Jennifer would bring her manager, Benny Medina, to tag along. I was so happy for Jennifer that I thought she, she was so happy <laughs> to marry this guy. <laughs> that I decided because of my friend, that my friendship was there. It was no publicity, it was nothing. Um, the Lake House in Como is already a piece of art because of the lake. All the garden was... I lighted the lake, was lighted from the bottom, and I gave her my apartment uh, for the honeymoon. But the romantic getaway wasn't exactly what the groom had in mind. JLo invited her manager, Benny Medina, to tag along. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, man. For the time and period that we all worked together, there was always so much going on that we really were more like a little mobile corporation. And uh, I said, okay, well, good, you guys will have that wing and I'll have that wing. And no, instead, we all had dinner every night. Jennifer's decision to bring her manager on her honeymoon would be a point of contention between herself and her husband. And according to Chris, in hindsight, it was a red flag. But despite Jennifer and Chris's marriage getting off to a rough start, they wouldn't have time to dwell on it, as Jennifer had back-to-back -back projects lined up. After taking a month off and enjoying some time in Mexico, Jennifer went right back to work. 
upon launching her clothing line, holding her first televised concert in Puerto Rico, releasing her very successful second album, and filming the movie Enough, Jennifer signed on to star in the movie Gigli, alongside actor Ben Affleck. After having met Jennifer at various events in the years prior, Ben Affleck was quite attracted to the star and wanted her to star alongside him in the film. Gigli would go into production in December of 2001, and as the story goes, Jennifer's marriage to Chris Judd wouldn't stand a chance. Lopez is the only woman to have a number one movie, The Wedding Planner, and a number one record, J-Lo, all in the same week. And it was that drive and talent that got Ben Affleck's attention long before they even met. One of the things I was most struck by was how she was able to do this sort of rock star thing and be an actress as well. A lot of people have tried to do it, and it's a really hard thing to do both at a high level. It would take one of those Hollywood twists of fate to bring them together on the set of Gigli. Jennifer Lopez was in only after another famous actress bowed out. Have you thanked Halle Berry for dropping out of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I should. I should write her a little note now that I think about it. Because that was a twist of fate, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, funny thing how things happen, you know. When did you meet? We met, like, at a couple of parties, you know. We barely Here paid any attention to each other. Yeah. Oh, just like, hi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, that's hi, a nice little thing. You iced me? Yeah. <laughs> no, you iced me. <laughs> but both stars came to the set with their own expectations about the movie and about each other. When you found out that, that you were going to work with her on this movie, what were your first thoughts? For real. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, uh, I, I was just said, I actually really wanted Jen to do the movie. I thought that it was important, like, selfishly for me, I wanted to have somebody who was well-known, you know, big star. Uh, and then, you know, I guess I was a little bit kind of thinking, well, is she going to be, uh, you know, what's this going to be like? I mean, you always sort of go into a movie, if you don't know the person you're working with, treading on thin ice sort of for the first week, hoping that the person doesn't turn out to be a disaster, you know? I'm sure it's the same for you, that you go in and you kind of want to see what's, what people are going to be like. No? Not the same for you? <laughs> no. No, I, I, I go into a movie with an open you mind. You worry. You worry a little I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried at all. I, 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 I worry more that the people are going to like me. You know what I mean? I'm like, I hope, I hope they like me. <laughs> I do. So did you call your girlfriend and say I'm working with Ben Affleck? He's the sexiest man alive. He wasn't the sexiest man alive then, no. He wasn't even remotely appealing, really, <laughs> to tell you the truth. No, he was so that. far from the sexiest man alive. I thought he was kind of homely. I didn't, I didn't mention it. Uh, no, I, um, I, was, uh, you know, I was excited to work on We Actually, I had, oh, I had uh, done... You called your girlfriend up and you were like... Hmm. I've been working with Ben Affleck. He's so fine. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> no. Do we marry sweetheart? I hope so. She's gorgeous. She thinks I'm beautiful. Yeah, she's blind to why. <laughs> it felt like we had good chemistry, you know what I mean? He liked to improv. I could improv back, you know what I mean? He's the best person to improv in the whole entire business, really. Uh, he's, he's so don't be funny. like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your mom like, don't do that thing where you're like, he's the best. He he's is, so though. Good I swear, I'm not like... the only one who says it. I'm not the only one who says it. When filming commenced for Geely, it wouldn't take long for Jennifer and Ben to hit it off. According to those who worked on set, the stars had an instant connection. Not long into filming, rumors regarding Jennifer and Ben's relationship would hit the press and make headlines. The media accused the duo of having an inappropriate relationship, saying that they were, quote, friendly and flirtatious on set. The New Zealand Herald writes, During the shooting of Gigli, Affleck was publicly affectionate, making out with Lopez after directors had yelled, cut. In an attempt to squash the rumors, Jennifer and Ben would immediately put out statements denying that they were having an affair. According to them, despite having great chemistry, they were just friends. But in a 2003 interview with Vanity Fair, Ben would admit that while filming Geely, he had a growing attraction toward Jennifer. He said, quote, I believe that more or less from the beginning of a relationship, you have an accurate sense of how far it could go, what the possibilities are. When I met her, we became really, really, really good friends. But at first, because she was married, there was no thought of a romantic relationship. So that created the opportunity to get to know each other without any of the falseness that goes with courtship because you're trying to make a good impression. 
I didn't try to change anything about myself, and she didn't either. We became really good friends in a way that was very comfortable. With Jen, I thought, even though it can never happen, it was nice for me to know I was capable of being that way, that I could love somebody in a way where what I wanted was for them to be happy, even more than what I wanted. That was a new experience for me. Remember when Ben and Jen were filming Gigli, she was a newlywed, married to her backup dancer, Chris Judd. And she was, in Ben's words, off limits. I think, I think people are inevitably will, will wonder. Um, the truth is, is that when we did start working together, and we, we got along great. I mean, we really did become friends, really, really good friends. How good? And really good friends. You know what I mean? We talked a lot. And that's the thing. There was no kind of um, idea that we would be together in the future. So it was one of the things where you kind of like actually say too much. What did you tell him that you don't want him to know? You know, we talked a lot about what do you talk about? You know what I mean? You talk about past relationships and how you are. And, you know, I was like this. And he was like, I was like this. And I was like, you know what I mean? So you just, you know, we gave up way too much. <laughs> and real quick, you know. Uh, so... But it was fun. And with hours and hours filming together, the co-stars say the intimate details flowed. You know, because you know when you're not trying to impress somebody because yeah. you don't think that you're ever going to be dating oh, them, so you're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't have to impress her. You know what I mean? And then you went up like, yeah, yeah, I did do that. You know what I mean? Or you'll kind of admit to things that you wouldn't necessarily... And the truth is probably... You know, we all try to put this... You he told know, me about all his ex-girlfriends and everything. That's what I mean, you know. And I, <laughs> that's how that's how. <laughs> yeah. So, I so, I, so anyways. <laughs> you, you, you know, when you, you put out like a kind of a representative, it's like Chris Rock says, when you're trying to meet, it's like right. you, the two representatives meet. It's not really you. You know, and, and, and instead I just, you know, and I think she was the same way. Right. So we kind of were kind of a cool way to do it. So it was great. Right. You get to know each so other. You kind of know the, the real person. Right. The real person. As that's opposed true. to like... The I haven't forgotten that shit either. According to Ben, though Jennifer was a married woman, he could intuitively sense that she wasn't happy in her marriage. Despite Chris coming on to set multiple times to visit Jennifer and be a supportive husband, Jennifer was starting to have regrets. But she wouldn't share this information with anyone. Instead, she kept it to herself. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Ben Affleck said the following, quote, I got the sense that she wasn't happy and that she thought it would be too inappropriate to do too much bad mouthing of her situation. So we would hang out, but I talked about me all the time. I was vaguely aware she had something going on, but I was too busy running off my mouth. Though Jennifer and Ben claimed to be just friends, reports of them having an affair continued to spread and the rumors would significantly affect Jennifer's marriage to husband Chris Judd. Jennifer and Chris had only been married for a few months, and according to reports, the rumors began to weigh heavily on Chris. But upon Gigli rapping in March of 2002, Ben Affleck would do the unthinkable. In April the following month, Ben would take out not one, but two full-page ads in two different publications, Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. In these ads, Ben gushed about working with Jennifer, and expressed his admiration for the star. In part, he wrote, quote, You have shown kindness, dedication, diligence, humility, graciousness of spirit, beauty and courage, great empathy, astonishing talent, real poise, and true grace. It has been nothing but an honor and a pleasure to work with you. I only wish I were lucky enough to be in all your movies. With love, respect, and gratitude, Ben Affleck. According to reports, Ben spent between fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars on these ads. He would later tell the media his reasoning behind this very public gesture, saying, quote, "Jen had developed this reputation as a diva and a pain in the ass, and I had trepidations about it. Frankly, I wanted to go on record within the industry to counteract that, to say what a pleasure it was to work with her." She works harder than anybody I've ever seen. I thought I was busy with movies and television and writing. I felt pretty maxed out until I met her. She was doing all that and recording albums on weekends. I was ashamed of my preconceived notions. I really liked working with her and have been so impressed with her acting skills. 
In a lot of ways, it was in contrast to what some of my preconceptions were about Jennifer. I thought I'd write a paragraph saying what a professional, decent person I think she is and how kind she is. She is a legendary perfectionist tearing from movie set to recording studio and has long excited rumors that she's a diva demanding the right candles, the perfect sheets. Are you difficult? No, I'm not. It's You're not difficult like, to live with, to work with? No, I'm easy. <laughs> And the diva thing, your own chef, your own sheets, your own... Yeah, my own sheets. That's a good one. At first, I hated it. I really, really hated it. I was like, you know, this is so mean. Why are they saying things like this about me? Where do they get this from? Who's saying things like this? I, I thought people around me were saying it. So it really hurt me. You know what I mean? You start trying to get to the root of where it's coming from. And then I was just like, you know what? It, it's something. I don't know why they chose me, but they chose me, and I'm just going to have to go with it. You know, maybe it's because I do like the glamour, and I do like the fancy clothes and the pretty coats. You know How much I mean? fun is it to be able to buy anything you want? Fun. <laughs> fun i was the girl with the hole in her shoes so yes really yes yes we really didn't have a lot of money i had the holes in the sneakers i had the holes in the sandals were you embarrassed about oh hell, hell yeah of course i was embarrassed but just like anybody else i didn't i didn't you know dwell on it but uh you know i it existed eventually when it's at your mom when she had the money then she'd go out and get you what she could you know bills i knew the word bills when i was two because it was always about the bills. <laughs> the house was like, we got to pay the bills. We're behind on the bills. Dave, did you pay the bills? Lupe, we got to pay the bills. You know, <laughs> it was bills, 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 bills. Everybody out there goes through it, you know? So, and that's how I grew up. So to, to now be able to have like, you know, a closet full of like designer shoes for me, it's like, I will never get over it. I'll be 60 years old. I will walk into my closet. I will look at the shoes and I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> I will be happy. I will look at my nice coat and I will be like, look at this nice coat. Yes, look at my coat. You know what I mean? It's it's a joy for me. And it's a joy to give it to my family and it's a joy to share it with people I love. You know, it's one of the great things about it. I'm not going to lie. Oh, no, the money does not matter. It's great. Affleck was so captivated by Lopez that he took out full page ads in Variety and The Hollywood Reporter, praising his co-star's beauty and courage, as well as her poise and true grace. He gushes about her in this ad that he has to pay for and take out. It's for the whole world to see. Now, if you're Chris Judd, I don't know how you take that. Upon Ben's public display of admiration for Jennifer, the media was quite perplexed as they felt that he was fueling the rumors that he and Jennifer were having an affair. But a few weeks later, Ben would take it up a notch when he showed up to the opening of Jennifer's restaurant, Madres, and had flowers delivered to her as she walked the red carpet with her husband, Chris Judd. Ben's gesture would cause quite the stir, not only in Jennifer's marriage, but also in the media. Many would comment and express how disrespectful it was of Ben to not only give another man's wife flowers, but to do it in front of him in such a public way. But Ben wouldn't be the only man causing discord in Jennifer's marriage. Her first husband, Ohani Noah, would also play a role. Upon the opening of Jennifer's restaurant in April of 2002, she would hire her ex-husband, Ohani Noah, to manage the restaurant. For context, back in 1997, when Jennifer was married to Ohani, she opened a nightclub called The Conga Room. She hired Ohani to launch and manage the club. When the couple divorced in 98, Ohani stayed on as the manager. Fast forward to 2002, Jennifer opened her restaurant, Madres. According to Ohani, upon Jennifer approaching him and asking him to manage the restaurant, he resigned from The Conga Room and accepted a managerial position at Madres. Jennifer and Ohani had remained friends over the years, so his decision to accept her proposal wasn't unusual. But there was more to the story. According to Ohani, Jennifer had ulterior motives to keep him by her side. He claims that despite Jennifer moving on in her love life, she attempted to reconcile with him several times. In an interview with the Daily Mail, Ohani said, quote, there were times she told me she wanted to get back together. In quiet moments, she would say, I need you in my life. I don't want to lose you. 
Jennifer's decision to hire Ohani as the manager at her restaurant became a huge issue in her marriage to Chris Judd. Not only was Chris having to deal with the tabloids running reports that his wife was having an affair with megastar Ben Affleck, but he also had to deal with his wife's ex-husband working at her restaurant. According to Chris, though he wanted to be a supportive husband, the situation took a toll on his mental health and his marriage. By May of that year, Jennifer and Chris would quietly separate. In June, they publicly confirmed their separation. And on July 24th, Jennifer would be photographed out and about with her new man. And her new man was none other than Ben Affleck. According to reports, Ben Affleck threw Jennifer a surprise birthday party where he professed his love and presented her with a Harry Winston bracelet decked out with yellow and white diamonds. When images of Jennifer and Ben leaving the party hit the press, the media went into a firestorm. Two days later, Jennifer filed for divorce. Her marriage to Chris Judd of less than a year was over. We reported on the official divorce papers filed by Jennifer Lopez and Chris Judd. Now from inside the documents, we have new details about a warning for future romances. In a statement to the court signed two days before her divorce filing, Jennifer requested a swift end to her marriage in order that their assets be divided immediately for tax purposes. Jennifer and Chris asked the court to settle all property issues right away. But the papers include a warning that neither party can remarry until January 26, 2003. Though she's not divorced yet, the New York papers are full of reports of a romance between Jennifer and Ben Affleck. One claims Ben, her co-star in two upcoming films, gave her a diamond bracelet at her birthday lunch Wednesday. And another claims on Monday they were canoodling at a posh New York sushi restaurant. Oh, I love him. When news broke that Jennifer and Chris were getting a divorce and that she had already moved on with Ben Affleck, the media went into a frenzy. To the press, it was a juicy story. To Chris, it was devastating. Chris loved Jennifer and thought he was going to be with her forever. According to his loved ones, Chris was a family man who truly valued marriage. In an interview with CNN, a family friend said, quote, Chris wanted this to work. I'm sure he thought it would last. Marriage is a very sacred thing to him. He didn't take it lightly or he wouldn't have done it. Things just don't work out sometimes. You have the best intentions going in. You feel like, you know, it's something that you want to be really great and special and last throughout time. But, you know, sometimes the world gets in the way, things happen, and it's just it's not right. You know, it's not that either one person is bad or good or anything like that. You know, both people could be great people who love and care about each other a lot. Um, we parted friends, and um, I, I wish him the best, and I know he wishes me the best, and he knows that he always has a friend here in me, and and that's just, you know, it's life. It's another thing in life for me where I feel like you just grow, and you move on, and you try to handle the situations with honesty and integrity, and um, so long as you do that, you know, um, everything will be okay. God will smile on that, you know what I mean? Nobody's without mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Everybody does, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect, you know, and I don't claim to be, I'm just a human being like everybody else. And except that my um, mistakes and my things are like, you know, on the front page of the paper. News of Jennifer's marital woes would cause quite the stir in the media as this was her second divorce in less than five years. When it came to love and relationships, Jennifer had developed a negative reputation with the tabloids dubbing her the next Elizabeth Taylor. In the weeks that followed, one source intimated to CNN that Chris was basically a rebound and that the two should have never gotten married. From their perspective, Jennifer used Chris as a way to break free from Diddy, who had a hard time letting Jennifer go. According to this source, when Jennifer ended things with Diddy back in February of 2001, Diddy refused to accept it. So as a way to prove that she was completely done with him, Jennifer rushed into a relationship with Chris to make a statement. The way they saw it, Chris was collateral damage. They told CNN the following, quote, 
I don't know that Jen and Chris should have been married. They were two people who were great dating and they probably should have stayed dating. I think Jennifer needed to get away from Puffy and Chris was great, solid grounding for her. I think she got married as a way to say to Puffy, let me go. I think it was Puffy's refusal to accept things that drove her to Chris. And what about Sean Combs, Puffy P. Diddy, the man who courted controversy, if not outright danger? He always seemed to be the one in control. We wondered, looking at the girl on the red carpet, who was she? Was she afraid? Um, no. I don't think she was afraid. I just think that I, at that time, was, uh, cared very deeply, uh, for, for Sean and, um, you know, just we just didn't have the same kind of ideals about life and family and stuff like that. And just wasn't a good relationship for me. It didn't have so much to do with him as it had to do with me at the time. I had to learn um, to care about myself a little bit more and put up certain boundaries of what I would accept and wouldn't accept. Because um, really, he was just being himself. He wasn't doing anything wrong. And he felt like he loved me very much. And I know he did. And I, I felt like the same way. So if I was unhappy in some way, then I was the one who had to do something. Not him. He was doing everything he wanted to do. After the nightclub shooting, so much in the headlines, Lopez stayed with Sean Combs for a year. But just three months after she left him, she became engaged to dancer Chris Judd. You can love somebody, but it, it cannot work out sometimes, you know, and that's um, a harsh reality for a diehard romantic like myself to face. She says not only was it an uncertain time for her, being in such a crazy life and needing a sense of security. But she adds she'd also given up hoping for the kind of magic you see in romantic movies. And I had actually gotten to the point where I didn't think that was going to happen for me. Chris specifically provided a very, very sense of calm in my life that I needed desperately at that time. And I think I provided for him something that he needed at that time as well. And she says she wants to make it clear to everyone that Ben Affleck did not break up her marriage. She says she and Judd had come back from a trip which made it clear to her that the marriage couldn't last when she went to work with her new co-star and the set of Gigli. Affleck, she says, was really just a friend, even if no one believes it. My last marriage made me very cautious to kind of fall in love with anybody, you know. And I know it may not seem like that to people, but too bad. And I feel like in the beginning us having the opportunity to become friends for a very long time without ever any romantic thing at all was a very big plus. When Jennifer split from Chris, the paparazzi upped their surveillance and followed her around relentlessly. With rumors swirling that Jennifer had left Chris for Ben, the press wouldn't let up. After being slammed in the media and labeled an adulteress, Jennifer attempted to clear things up by telling the press that she didn't become intimate with Ben until the spring of that year, after she had already privately separated from Chris. In a 2003 interview with Reader's Digest, Jennifer said, quote, I'm a very faithful person. If somebody had told me, Ben's attracted to you, I would have said, no, I wasn't raised that way. Chris and I were having problems, but that's one thing Ben and I never talked about. I felt it was too private and sacred to talk about that with another man. It wouldn't have been cool. So he talked about past relationships and his old girlfriends and crazy things he did and silly things I did. After the movie, we kept in touch. Then I told Ben I couldn't talk to him because by then Chris and I were separated and I didn't want anything to be misconstrued. He respected it and never called me. Then I called him. The fact that I wasn't open to Ben in a romantic way until I separated from Chris made a huge difference. He knew that if he was ever involved with me, I would never do it to him. When did you realize, whether in your heart or, or head, that you liked Ben more than just as a prof on a professional level, that it was something there? I just knew when we worked together, we became really good friends. And I knew that he would be one of the few people I've worked with that afterwards, because you, 
you know, you make these little families on films as you go, and then you walk away. I remember my first two movies I ever did, like I cried. And I was like, I can't do this every single time, you know? (laughs) With Ben, I really felt like, God, we became friends. And like, this is somebody, him and actually Justin uh, Bartha as well. It's like, these are two people who I could see myself being friends with afterwards. You know what I mean? We actually connected on that level. Larry Giggly, right? I saw it on the mailbox. Yeah, it's pronounced as Gigli, but rhymes are really. Ben Affleck would corroborate Jennifer's account in that they were never involved with each other prior to Jennifer's separation from Chris. In his interview with Vanity Fair, Ben denied rumors that he had an affair with Jennifer, saying, quote, That is absolutely not true. It goes against the fundamental code I believe in and live by. Being honest doing things with which I can love rather than be ashamed of, doing esteemable things, deliberately and consciously trying to live like that made me happier. Because I feel comfortable and good about where I am and the choices I'm making, the very idea of hiding or misrepresenting anything I'm doing makes me really uncomfortable. And that's not something that's in Jennifer's character either. Both of us wanted to err on the side of doing the right thing. Despite Jennifer and Ben denying rumors that they had an affair, Chris's father, Larry Judd, wasn't buying into their narrative and spin on things. According to Larry, Jennifer did cheat on Chris, and he intended to let everyone know, despite Chris's disapproval. Larry would give several interviews discussing what he alleges happened between Jennifer, Chris, and Ben. In a 2002 interview with the National Enquirer, Larry said, quote, Overnight, Jennifer cast my son aside and turned her back on her marriage vows. She started cheating on Chris with Ben after just five months of marriage. My son and Jen had a happy marriage until she started filming Gigli with Affleck. She was leaving the house at 5 a.m. and she wouldn't return until after 10 p.m. Jennifer was spending more time with Ben and Ben made Chris feel unwelcome. Then in May, she told Chris that their marriage was over and she should be seeking a divorce. Jen did not conduct herself as a married woman, and Ben did not respect the fact that she was my son's wife. Chris's father definitely had a hard time with Affleck's not-so-subtle approach. I wish she would have said, Dad, there's trouble on the horizon. I would have said, okay, you tell Mr. Affleck right in his face. I want you to honor the fact that she's a married woman and you keep your butt away from my wife. I don't think he did it. Upon Jennifer's divorce filing, she and Chris would quickly come to a financial settlement agreement in July 2002, the same month she filed for divorce. Despite reports claiming that Chris was set to receive a $14 million payout to walk away from the marriage, Larry Judd claims that wasn't so. According to Larry, Chris declined the settlement, but instead opted to walk away with just his car, his dog, and his clothes. In a 2003 interview, Larry said, quote, Chris is still probably the best thing that ever happened to her. Chris is a one-woman guy. He wasn't ashamed to walk 10 or 15 feet behind her at a movie premiere. She was the star. His thing was to motivate her and keep her life in perspective. Chris said there were no problems, but I knew there were problems. I said, give her some room, maybe she'll come out of it. She didn't. She jumped in with the worst person she could possibly be with. During the filming of Gigli, I thought Mr. Affleck would honor a married woman and not just go right into the trailer. Jennifer was infatuated with Ben from the start. She'd be happier if she'd just tell the truth. No one in her little circle is going to say one negative thing to her. I feel sorry for her. So listen, what do we make of this? (laughs) Huh? I like it. Sexiest man alive? Not bad, huh? If he were sitting here today, what do you think he would say about you? Why he likes you? (laughs) I don't don't know. Give us a shot. (laughs) I don't know. I think he'd say um, me having a, a big heart or something. By the summer of 2002, the ink on divorce papers barely dry, twice married Jennifer Lopez opened her heart once again. 
going public with a relationship with actor Ben Affleck. You ever try to conceal that relationship? Or do you find it impossible? Um, or, or we're, actually, we're not I, trying to do anything except yeah. be two people in love. As Jennifer was working to finalize her divorce from Chris, things between herself and Ben would heat up. The couple would be dubbed Benifer as coverage of their relationship would consume entertainment news. Though Jennifer's love affair with Ben was seemingly moving forward, her business relationship with ex-husband Ohani Noah would hit a roadblock. According to reports, after hiring Ohani to manage her restaurant back in April 2002, Jennifer suddenly fired him six months later, without warning, rhyme, or reason. According to Ohani, he had a contract with Jennifer. When he accepted the managerial position, she agreed that she wouldn't fire him without good cause or reason. In a lawsuit filed against the actress, Ohani stated, quote, Lopez told me that she would take care of me and not fire me without good cause or reason. Six months later, however, I was out of a job. I tried to call Ms. Lopez to find out what prompted this sudden change of events. My calls went unreturned. She didn't even have the decency to explain why she had lied to lure me to accept a job that she did not plan on letting me keep in the first place. How's your relationship going with Ojani now that Chris is out of the picture? Is Ben, uh, 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 how do you say your um, ex-husband's last name? Ohani oh, Noah. Ohani Noah. How's your relationship with him? It's it's good. Is he still managing the restaurant? Uh, no, he left the restaurant. He got fired? She let him go. You had to fire him. What was he not doing? Um, no, he was actually just hired to open the restaurant. Okay. He moved on. I heard the inspectors have been through the restaurant already. And oh, sure. They didn't give you a favorable review or something like that? Is that, that right? No, I don't think so. Everything's been going well with Yeah, that? it's going really good. Where is he working now? Who? Oh, Johnny. I don't know. I don't know. La relación entre Ohani y Jennifer habían quedado en tan buenos términos que incluso ella le llamó cuando quiso abrir su restaurante Madres para que él trabajara como gerente. Me ofrecieron una buena cantidad de dinero. Y, y acepté el trabajo. Yo estaba ganando, con una, o sea, con un chamaco de 22, 23 años, de estar ganando casi 200 mil dólares al año, eso es un buen dinero. Claro. Y más en esa época. Ella me hace una promesa, eh, antes de empezar a trabajar, que cuando pasaran seis meses, ella me iba, ellos, la compañía, ella, me iba a empezar a pagar el doble de lo que yo estaba ganando. Y cuando llegaron los seis meses, yo empecé a reclamar lo que a mí me habían ofrecido. Entonces siempre fue, no, no, que tú eres parte de la familia, no, no, que tú eres esto, no, no, que tú eres lo otro, no te, no te preocupes que nosotros te damos el contrato. Y pero es que, o sea, esto, esto es una... No, porque esto, esto no se hace. Ustedes a mí me deben dinero. Ustedes me ofrecieron. Yo me fui de, de conga. Yo, yo, o sea, yo, yo he dado toda mi vida. Yo le pregunté, traté de hablar con ella. La llamé muchas veces cuando eso sucedió. La llamaba, la llamaba, nada. No me agarraba el teléfono, no me contestaba. Y quien me agarraba el teléfono era el asistente de ella, Aldín. Y me llamaba y me decía, ella está ocupada, te va a llamar después. Ese llamar después nunca, nunca llegó. Por eso decidió demandar a Jennifer. Ellos a mí no me, me votan injustificadamente, no me dan la explicación de por qué me votan. Yo, o sea, me busco un abogado porque ya estaba cansado, me cansé. Dije, no, no, yo no se voy a quedar así porque tengo que defenderme. Pusimos la demanda en contra de, de la compañía madre eh, de Resort. Y entonces, entre una cosa y la otra, el pleito, esa, llegamos a un acuerdo. Hicimos un cero. According to Ohani, despite the exes maintaining a friendly relationship over the years, there was now bad blood between them, as Ohani felt that Ben was influencing Jennifer and encouraging her to cut ties with him. Ohani was not a fan of the couple, and he wouldn't be the only one that was tired of the Benifer frenzy. By the fall of 2002, the public had had enough of the couple, as many believed that their relationship was a publicity stunt to promote their upcoming movie. Upon denying that their relationship was a PR move, the couple were about to give the public an even bigger dose of the Benifer Circus when Ben starred in Jennifer's music video, Jenny from the Block. Upon depicting the media's insatiable appetite for the couple, Ben and Jen would be slammed by the public and labeled obnoxious for essentially shoving their relationship down everyone's throat. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Ben addressed the public outrage and backlash, saying, quote, Everyone completely missed the point. The reason I did the video was as a commentary on the crazy tabloid paparazzi attention. 
but it was covered without any irony whatsoever. We were trying to say, look how silly this is, while at the same time have it be fun and sexy. They are photographed relentlessly, like some exotic species on a 24-hour celebrity nature channel. It's not just about love. It's about being in the public eye when you're in love and going through relationships. The day we talked, these photos in the paper took a shot at the length of her scarf. I know, it was like today in the paper where they, they I mean, I on the screen, I was like, you don't like my scarf? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That's a great scarf. It's supposed to be long. <laughs> do you Funny. know the cameras are there when you do it? Is that? Oh, it depends. You know, a lot of times they catch us. You know what I mean? There'll be a cross street and then we'll see them after. We'll be like, is that a camera across the street underneath that car? You know what I mean? And Affleck is so determined not to take it all too seriously. Okay. He decided in another way to flirt with the line between the truth and the tabloids. And he's in the video. I really kept asking. I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? Because he was like, I'll be in the video. You know, he was like all gung-ho about it. You know, he's never really done anything like this before and hasn't been around somebody making an album and stuff. So all of it was really new to him. And he was so supportive and so kind of like right there. I mean, he is my partner. He is my best friend. You know what I mean? And we talk about everything and we support each other to the end. Though Ben and Jen were being ridiculed in the press for their relationship, they had no plans on slowing things down. A few weeks after Jennifer's music video premiered, it would be reported that the couple were engaged. After having dated for only three months, Ben and Jen were headed down the aisle. It's the most magnificent thing I've ever seen. I still look at it, kind of marvel at it, like, <laughs> you know? He was like, I just wanted you to have something that nobody else would have. And and was it a very uh, traditional proposal? It was traditional, but also in a very spectacular way, as, uh, of course, Ben would do it, you know? And it was really funny because I was like, you know, you know, I really wanted his family to like me and everything. And I had met them and, you know, we're all getting to know each other. So I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't know if they like me. He's like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, my family loves you. And I don't know. You know what I mean? And he's like, he's like, he's like, you're insane. So we go back and we're supposed to just basically spend the weekend with his family. And then when we got there and we go to walk into the house, we drive there and he was like a little nervous, but I didn't, I didn't know why and he kept calling and saying you know things like you know, I, you know how much i love you and you know how much i want to spend my life with you know all this stuff and i'm like yeah I got it. like it was a little bit too much during the day and i was just like what is going on you know <laughs> and then finally we get to the house and we walk in oh that was nothing he kept saying how the house is going to be a mess and they'll probably have pizza there for us and i'm like stop it already it's fine it's enough what are you explaining like you don't have to explain those things to me i grew up just like you did it's fine you know so I, we walk up to the the house and i see like little candles up the stairs and i'm like oh look how cute his mom must have heard that i like candles or something from the tabloids <laughs> you know what i mean so she put them up the stairs oh, that's sweet and um he opens the door and it is just a blanket a quilt of rose petals all over the whole entire house. And just everything was just so so many candles and vases with bouquets. And, and my song, Glad, was playing. And I walk in and I'm just like overwhelmed. Like I wasn't expecting it. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I kept thinking, I was like, how did he do this? Because we were in Philadelphia working and I was like, who did this? And he was like, my mom helped me do it. And I just started sobbing. I was like, oh my God. And it was just the most, it was the best day of my life. Did he know what you'd say? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was funny because, you know, he had um, written this letter which he says was really too long. He didn't realize how long until he started reading it and I was crying a lot, you know what I mean? And he's reading it, reading it, telling me all the stuff that he wanted to tell me as, you know, I guess he proposed. At the end, he was, he just said, will you marry me? And I was just like, and he, he had the ring out, but I didn't want to look at the ring because I could tell it was pink. 
And I was just like, oh, God, it can't be pink on top of it. I was just too much for me to handle. I was just like, oh, my God. I was like, I can't. He was like, baby, look at it. I was like, I can't. I can't. You know, and he was just like, look at it. And I looked at the ring and I was like, oh, my God. It was just, it's the most magnificent thing. And he was like, you haven't answered me. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I had cried a lot over sadness over the years, you know what I mean? And things that had gone wrong and relationships that didn't work out. And for the first time in my life, I cried an incredible purging tears of happiness. And it was the most cleansing feeling and the most wonderful feeling I had ever had. It was the best day of my life. Ben's proposal to Jennifer was quite controversial, being that her divorce from Chris hadn't been finalized yet. But according to Ben, that wouldn't stop the two from wanting to tie the knot. As he put it, they were traditional people who desired marriage. Upon news that two of the biggest stars were set to marry, Jennifer would be shamed by the public and labeled, quote, a loose woman who is addicted to love. From the public's perspective, Ben was too good for Jennifer. In addition to Jennifer being slammed by the public and media, Her first husband, Ohani Noah, would weigh in and issue a warning to Ben. He said, quote, Jennifer is a cold, heartless, modern day Elizabeth Taylor who is in love with herself. Wedding vows mean nothing to her. She moves on when she gets tired of sleeping with the same man. Ben Affleck better beware before it's too late. Ohani spoke out after the Ben and Jen engagement became public. He was like warning Ben Affleck, uh, you know, it'll be great while it lasts, but don't expect it to last because she she loses interest and, and moves on. You know, that might be just sour grapes on his part. There's a big difference between staying married to a, a waiter and staying married to one of the biggest movie stars in Hollywood. And of course, the biggest notch on Jennifer's belt up until now was P. Diddy. Everybody knows the history of that. I do not own a gun. Puffy has been very public talking about how the breakup with Jennifer was very difficult for him. So how did the two most famous loves of Jen's life stack up against each other? Whew, he did invent. <laughs> Let's take a look. We'll start with that all-important category, height. Ben's got the edge in this one. He's six foot two, while P. Diddy stands at just five foot nine. I saw P. Diddy at a party. He's a lot shorter than I thought he was going to be. Next category, gift giving. Ben made a huge score with that massive engagement ring. He's also given her a Rolex and a Ferrari. And he bought Jennifer's mother a Mercedes E-Class sedan. But P. Diddy was no slouch either, lavishing J-Lo with a $300,000 Bentley. The Bentley to you, to me, it's a blue car. And on one occasion, even sending her 100 white doves. This one's a tie, but Ben should probably get a holster for that credit card. Next, side project. P. Diddy's got his career as a rap mogul, Ben's got his as a movie superstar, but P. Diddy's diversified with his lucrative Sean John clothing line, and Ben's branched out as a TV producer with Project Greenlight. It's new, it's interesting. Ask yourself this question. When Mama wants a new pair of earrings, which business is going to bring in more loot? A major fashion corporation or a short-lived reality series? When it comes into who brings more money, TV's got a hand down. Next category, behavior. Let's face it, neither one of these guys has been the same. P. Diddy has had some scrapes with the law, while Ben had to check himself into rehab. Now both guys have apparently cleaned up their act. Another tie. Last but not least, artistic merit. Ben's got an Oscar. Those things are not easy to do. Hold up, stop. Stop. Now wait a minute. Diddy's got a Grammy. Okay, I can't say. The difference? Ben wrote the original screenplay for Goodwill Hunting that won him the Oscar, along with Matt Damon. When it comes to P. Diddy's big hit, the Grammy-winning I'll Be Missing You, he got just a little too much help from a guy named Sting. Advantage? Ben. Jennifer's career is going definitely in the direction of Hollywood royalty, and I think that Ben fits that whole persona much better than P. Diddy does. So what you trying to tell me, dear? Let me tell you something about J-Lo. Yeah. Can you believe <laughs> how much attention this relationship of hers is getting? It's ridiculous. With Ben Affleck. And you know what's sad? It's going to end in a divorce, just like the other two marriages. You know it, and I know it. 
This girl gets married every year. In fact, she had a longer relationship with you than she had with any of her husbands. Yeah. Comment on that. Comment what do you think, P. Diddy? Is it a great ass or what? Comment on everything that's just been said. Well, I told you before it was a great ass. Yeah, we know it's it's a great she ass. is a great ass. He hit that ass for a long time. I mean, that, that, that's in the past. You know, it's somebody else's ass now. I mean, anyway, <laughs> anyway that, that, that's the way it that's goes. That's a past I mean, ass. Anyway, think, Ben Affleck. I, mean, I, I, like, I like Ben. I mean, I like do? Ben. I like the Ben and Jen thing. I mean, it's all good. Anyway, I mean, Ben Affleck, you, you know, give like it to her as good as you did. Any way possible? No. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, you're good at it. I mean, I you know, know what you're doing. I'm not really looking at what nobody else is doing. I mean, that my my thing was in the past, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm living in another in another world, time zone. Another now. time zone right now. You glad know? to be rid of. I mean, it's it's not even it's not even like that. I'm happy to be in a relationship that I'm in. You know, nothing better than fresh new ass. According to Ben, the commentary regarding his engagement to Jennifer was not only offensive but hurtful. In an effort to defend his fiance, Ben would speak out and set the record straight. In his Vanity Fair interview, he said, quote, Jen had fewer boyfriends than your average high school junior. She's had a much simpler, more easily explainable, more clean romantic history than I have. She can tell the whole story in 15 minutes, whereas I always preface the whole story with, it was complicated. I think this also has to do with race. There's a kind of language that's used about her. The spicy Latina, the tempestuous diva. She's characterized as oversexed. I mean, the woman has had five boyfriends in her whole life. She's a deeply misunderstood woman, in my opinion. Jennifer is a really wonderful, fabulous woman. Smart and interesting. Spending time with her makes me a better person and a happier person. She impresses me every day. It feels better to be with her than without her. That's why I made this decision, even if some other things have to be sacrificed. Neither of us is so obtuse that we didn't understand the degree of skepticism, the amount of sniggering and how we would be perceived. Saturday Night Live epitomized it. Tina Fey said, Jennifer Lopez announced her engagement. It's the first marriage for Affleck, the third for Lopez, and the last for neither. But that's not something I want to allow to dictate how I make decisions. This is something I would do if Jen was a teacher and I was working construction in Boston. Jen and I want to get married for the reason everyone else does. We fell in love. I'm in love. I want to have a family. And she's the only person I've ever met who made me entertain the thought of doing that. You know within 10 minutes of meeting Jen that she'll be a good mother. My father said the same thing about my mother, who was a world-class Olympian mother. When it comes to Jennifer Lopez and romance, what about all the skeptics who think she's been way too eager to fall in love and has a history to prove it? By the way, she doesn't disagree. Because I am such a kind of artist in that way you know just such a flutter bug in that way you know what i mean where it's just like you know the idea of love and fairy tales and romance and all that is so appealing to me and it's not just romance at the age of 32 she's already been married twice to ohani noah a model and the second one dancer chris judd that one just a little more than a year ago and the divorce is still not final so why does she think it's real with 30 year old ben affleck when her true love track record doesn't exactly inspire confidence. But do you say to yourself, how could I be so wrong as to think that was... I just think I was really, really... No, I, I do think that. Married. I think that. I think that. Um, I don't regret it. I feel like everything happens for a reason. Your first marriage was 17 months, I think. Not even. Uh, Not even 17. Maybe 10 or 11. Right. I said I've been married twice, but I haven't had a marriage yet. And because the other one was so short. Yeah. Eight months. And that's what's throws everybody that you fell in love you fell in love enough to get married this is not to take anything away from chris or ohani who were are wonderful people and who i loved very much you know but um i think it more had to do with me but we pressed her again how can she be sure this one is real you're asking me to, you want to know how i feel so i'll tell you what i knew that was different this time is that I was just more scared, more scared. It was too powerful and it was too this and it just made me really, whereas before it was almost like I had control of the things. 
So I wasn't afraid to kind of be in there and in the fire and the fire was far enough away that I can dance around in there. And this time it was just smothering me and so hot, you know, that it was just like made me afraid. Bigger. These are Bigger yeah. and realer. And you just, you just feel it. It's just something different. It's a different, totally different than anything else you've ever experienced. If you were describing somebody you've never met him, what would be the first thing you'd say? Um, if I had to describe him, I'd probably say that he's an brilliantly smart, loving, charming, affectionate, and I just admire him in every way. You know what I mean? I, like, I respect him. Um, I feel like he teaches me things, you know. You really thought he was just one of those Hollywood Playboy type. Yeah. Skirt chasers. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be mad I said that. No, but I've told him too. He knows. Uh, we've talked about this so many times. And we talked about how people kind of see him with some one type of person and me with another type of person. And two of us together is like, how did that happen? And how we're probably more like and from the same kind of background and, you know, same kind of upbringing and same kind of family and same kind of house and all that kind of stuff. You went home to Boston. You met his mom. I met his mom. You we stayed, stayed in the at house? his house, which was just like my house in the Bronx. I spent hours. He took me everywhere all over Boston and just showed me his whole history of his life. And it was great. Despite the public criticism and media circus that ensued upon Ben and Jen's engagement, they made it clear that regardless of the flack and judgment they received, they were in love and intended to prove everyone wrong. On November 25, 2002, a few weeks after their engagement announcement, Jennifer released her highly anticipated third album, This Is Me, Ben, which was heavily inspired by her relationship with Ben. The album peaked at number two and became a commercial success. Someone said love is friendship set to music. On her new album, Lopez wrote a song for Affleck. No flowery words, just an everyday feeling. Glad. And it turns out he inspired the title of her album, too. She was worried, and he told her to have faith in herself. And I actually had a really, you know, long conversation with Ben about it. And, you know, he was like, you know, this is your music, and it's great, and it's who you are at this time. He was like, you know, 20 years from now when, you know... You show this to your kids or whatever. You know what I mean? You can say, this was me then. This was who I was. This is what I stood for. This is what I stood by. This is what I felt. And as I thought about that, that really stuck in my head. I didn't tell him right then. But later on, the next day and stuff, I was thinking about it. And I was like, so I think I'm going to name the album, This Is Me, then. It'll always represent to me the time in my life where I finally started to figure things out and get it right. You know what I mean? Really started who I was and what I needed. And, and there's one more thing. Just today, Ben Affleck emailed me back when I wrote him to ask if there's anything he'd like to say. Here's what he wrote. I consider myself to be the luckiest man alive for reasons which should be plainly self-evident after hearing Jen speak for a minute, much less an entire hour. He says that her new movie is extraordinary and her new album? It's a wonderful reflection of who Jennifer really is. A truly graceful beauty with an artist's soul who has made me an extremely happy man. She's doing great, and the album is great, and the movie's great, and she's happy, and so I'm happy, and I'm just uh, having a good time. I want to talk to you about some of the things she wrote about you in this album. She dedicated it to you, saying that basically it came about because of your support. She wrote lyrics in a song about you, so now's your turn, and you've got some, a tough act to follow. So what has this relationship meant to you? Well, if I were half as, as talented at, at songwriting as she is, then I would attempt to. But uh, obviously, uh, she means a great deal to me. I was enormously flattered. and. He's going to write me a movie. He's going to win another Oscar for it. That's right. I'll write a, a screenplay. No, obviously, I, I'm very happy, and she's great. And as all you can see, um, what an incredible, wonderful talent and what a wonderful woman in person. So um, I was just here as a fan and very excited, and I had a wonderful time. So what are the future plans? When are you two getting hitched? 
We don't know yet. I'm sure we'll do it on the Today Show, however. I promise? Yeah, how, no, I'm, that's I'm, what we were, I'm gonna hold you to that. Of getting married if you don't do it on the Today we Show. We have a little wedding every summer. What's the big deal? As long as you let people choose every element of it for exactly. you. Exactly. You could pick the uh, dress online and yeah. So you get maybe we're, Valentine's we're, we're, Day? Not Valentine's Day, no. no Valentine's. That's not uh, that's not true. I have a movie opening Valentine's Day actually, right. so I have to be working. <laughs> let me ask you a little bit about sexiest man alive. Jennifer Lopez would end 2002 on a high. She had become an international superstar, was engaged to the love of her life, and looking forward to becoming Mrs. Affleck. But little did she know that in 2003, everything would fall apart. At the start of the year, Jennifer's divorce to her second husband, Chris Judd, would be finalized. Upon Jennifer's divorce from Chris, she began planning her upcoming nuptials to Ben, but what started out as a blissful time for the couple soon became a nightmare when the media began to place bets on how long their marriage would last. In his interview with Vanity Fair, Ben would address the increasing scrutiny surrounding their relationship. He said, quote, I'm in the middle of the media carnival. After having been in a relationship with Gwyneth, it's not something that's new to me. It's just an escalation but I really don't understand it. There is a war looming in the Middle East. Europe is redefining itself. America is in a recession. Sure, we're getting married, but I just can't understand why this is a 20-page item. I think it has to do with race and class. The fact that I'm white and she's Puerto Rican. That's what's underneath, although nobody says it because it's not politically correct. <laughs> But their romance has propelled them to a whole new level of fame. Every move they make from the red carpet to a Red Sox game is photographed and talked about. Again. And again. And all that buzz has made Ben and Jen a very formidable duo. So, you are dating, huh? <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been found out, it seems. This is your first interview together, what does it feel like? I'm finally doing this. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, evidently. <laughs> Feels like being stoned, apparently. <laughs> Do you realize how fascinated America is by you? It's so weird to even hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like such a strange thing. No, we don't sit around here and, and think about that. I, I don't know. I don't What's the fascination? It seems strange to me. I think that you can really make yourself crazy if you start thinking about Who's paying attention to me? Who's who's interested in me? Okay, so another couple may have briefly stolen their thunder. How happy were you when Ashton Kutcher and Denise started dating? Elated. <laughs> so pleased. I'm, I'm looking for more. I'm trying to drum that up. I'm constantly calling the tablets. Like, have you guys heard about um, Kirk Douglas and Mandy Moore? <laughs> are dating? Uh, I sort of anticipated that. Like, I figured, okay, there'd be like a certain amount of attention this would get, and then mm. something else would come along that would be newer tabloid fodder. Wishful thinking, Ben. But Ben says, don't believe those stories you've read about his lavish spending habits. Though there's no denying, he went all out on that 6.1 carat pink diamond engagement ring. What's the most extravagant thing you bought? Him? I would say engagement ring is probably a thing that men spend the most money on in there, right? Well, there's all these car rumors that you yeah, buy cars. I, have, I somehow have like 8,000 cars. I wish. Where are all these cars? I want the cars. I'm sure I'm number one carjack target. The carjackers are so disappointed. They're staking out my house. Like, where are all the cars? But these two super rich superstars say it's their middle class background that brought them together. At heart, he's just a kid from Beantown and she's well, you know. Despite the public criticism, Ben and Jen carried on as their movie, Gigli, was set to premiere that summer. Though this film was highly anticipated, it would perform terribly at the box office upon its release on August 1st, 2003. Gigli would be panned by critics and labeled a flop. At this point, the media and public were tired of Benifer and had no interest in seeing them together on screen, in the tabloids, or anywhere. Immediately following the backlash of their movie, Ben and Jen would find themselves in another scandal. When reports came out that Ben allegedly cheated on Jennifer with an exotic dancer at a nightclub, the National Enquirer would be the first to run the story, writing, Hollywood actor Ben Affleck 
had an intimate encounter with an exotic dancer at Brandy's Exotic Nightclub in Vancouver while he was filming the movie Paycheck. The escapade, which was apparently caught by security cameras in a private lap dance room and carried on at a late night party at Christian Slater's rental home, was alleged to have occurred on July 17th. Alan Butterfield, the senior correspondent who broke the story, challenged Ben Affleck to take a lie detector test, saying, Our sources have already passed one. Ben cheated. I didn't. He's a public figure. If that's the reason he and Jennifer split, I feel zero blame. Once this report hit the media, it spread like wildfire. Jennifer, who was filming the movie Shall We Dance, would reportedly flee the set and fly back to Los Angeles, where she would hide from the paparazzi until the story died down. Ben, however, would take a different approach as he publicly denounced the rumors. He admitted that he did go to the nightclub with Jennifer's knowledge, of course, but was adamant in the fact that he didn't cheat on his fiance. We're talking with Ben Affleck, star of I Went to a Strip Club. Is that the name of another one? Yeah, that was the, the name of the movie. Thing, you know, I keep hearing all these rumors and ooh. That's what amazing. You know how many times I've been to strip clubs? I mean, not <laughs> that many, mind you, but it never occurred to me that it was news, you know. It's, uh, it's sort of amazing. You know, it's, it's actually a funny story. <clears throat> uh, basically, you know, I'm up there, and I'm, I'm a young guy, and I'm, I'm getting married soon, as you right, may have heard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I have some friends, and they said, you know, hey, we, want, we should go out and do like a little mini bachelor party. I said, oh, I don't know. My friends in Boston are kind of planning one. They said, come on, we'll go out to one of these, you know, with so these So you clubs. were duped into so I was, Well, they yeah. told me it was a, a, a Christian youth gathering. Yeah. What I, <laughs> what I thought initially going in. Then when I got there. Of course. Yeah. But I did have the common sense <laughs> to call Jennifer and say, hey, yeah. you know, I'm going to go to this uh, this place, and it's, it's kind of wacky, and they want wait, me to wait, go. Wait, wait, is that what you said? I'm going to this place, and it's kind of wacky? Something along those lines, yeah. I mean, no, I said, it's a strip, you know, and she's actually, Jennifer's very secure and cool. She was like, all right, great, have a good time, you know, knock she's yourself She's cool up. with that. She's very secure, very secure. Yeah, but she, she was, was cool with that. She said she was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, see, I can't do that thing, say yes, no, mind read thing. I As say, a you man say yes. who's been married 23 years, if they say they're cool with it, they're not cool with it. <laughs> So she's cool with it. So I go there, and it was a. Uh, it was actually relatively. Ta- it would have been like you know, like a, it would have been like a brunch for Colin Farrell. You know right. what I'm saying? It was like a time. <laughs> and uh, they go there. Yeah, yeah, but, over on Colin. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Colin's a bad guy. Do you know him? Um, <laughs> So I go there, and it's just relatively typical. By the time the tabloids get a hold of it, I'm like in a three way with Michael Jackson and Elvis and the Wolfman. Right. You know? But. Uh, it was a relatively tame, as those things are. Yeah, and I yeah. get back, and I said, and, and then they said, oh, well, they're going to, you know, it's not like I thought people were going to notice me, but they said, oh, they're going to run this story about it. So I called Jen. I said, you know, they're, uh, they're going to run a story about me. This wacky thing. thing. It is. <laughs> you, you know, I told you. That. She said, well, looks like you had your bachelor party. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I did. We do it. So then I had to make the second call, which to my friends in Boston. Oh. Yeah, I said, guys. I don't think uh, I don't think the bachelor party is going to happen. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, Bubba, I can't do it. He was like, why not? I said, because I, I kind of already had the bachelor party. He was like, what am I going to do with all this livestock? So uh, that was my weekend. So that was a weekend. Yeah, so newsworthy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Because the scandal, I remember you said to me. The what scandal. You, well, the, well, the, it was not the scandal, but the whole thing, the movie, the strip. It was like, what would you call it? You call it. Well, it was kind of like, there's a, it, it was really a confluence of different factors that happened with the movie. Confluence of Yes, factors. I realize what it is. It's basically that the, the, there was bad buzz on the movie to begin right. with, right? And then this whole like kind of diarrhea of publicity about me and Jen all the time. And a diarrhea the, of publicity. Yeah. Wow. It's like, you know, you just get splashed with it. You know? I, don't, I, I, I got you. I, don't, that's a, I got the image. That's the facts. I just wanted to <clears throat> drive it home. And, uh, and the third thing was the fact that the, the movie wasn't that good. Right, right. So I realized what it was. It was the perfect storm. The perfect storm. Yeah. I felt like the Clooney character at the end of the movie when he looks over and sees the big wave. Like, <laughs> turned into a slam dunk contest for critics. So uh, if you need but, your but cars you're, washed. But you're a good sport. Because, uh, I mean, I know people that literally will not come out of there. You know, they get a bad review, and they don't come out of the house. I can't, I can't yeah, reach them I mean, for like you know, weeks. Sometimes I mean, the movies are good, sometimes they're not. You can't get fun. obsessed with everybody oh, loving you, you all the time. Yeah, mm. right. You know, I don't know about, like, somebody yeah. said it gave them eye cancer. I wouldn't go that yeah. far, but <laughs> the movie wasn't that good. You know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of those strippers are college girls working their way through PhD. Well, I'm trying to yeah. Yeah, stimulate the economy. Following this scandal, all eyes were on Ben and Jen, 
And despite putting on a united front, the pressure, scrutiny, and negativity from the media began to take a toll on the couple. On September 10, 2003, just days away from their nuptials, Ben and Jen unexpectedly called off their wedding. In a joint statement to the press, they said, quote, Due to excessive media attention surrounding our wedding, we have decided to postpone the date. When we found ourselves seriously contemplating hiring three separate decoy brides at three different locations, we realized that something was awry. We felt what should have been a joyful and sacred day could be spoiled for us, our families, and our friends. Upon canceling their wedding, Ben and Jen would briefly split, but reconcile shortly thereafter. But despite attempting to make things work, they would end their relationship for good in January 2004, and as the public knew it, Benifer was over. Two months after their split, Ben and Jen's second movie together, Jersey Girl, hit theaters on March 26, 2004 to negative reviews. This was a devastating period in Jennifer's life. Her engagement to the love of her life had ended, and critics were tearing her career apart. But despite this being a very dark period in her life, there would be light at the end of the tunnel when Jennifer found her way back into the arms of the man who always loved her, Latin sensation Mark Anthony. In her 2014 memoir, True Love, Jennifer writes, quote, Sometimes love strikes when you're least expecting it. Mark came back into my life three days after I should have been at the altar saying, I do to another man. With Mark, unlike my other relationships, I found common ground and similar dreams instead of passion at first. It was the total opposite of the relationship I was coming out of. Being a couple that was on the cover of every tabloid magazine for two years straight, hounded by the paparazzi and constantly judged, our relationship crumbled under the pressures of the media scrutiny that surrounded us. Ben Affleck and I called off our wedding, ending our very public relationship in suitably dramatic fashion, just days before we were to walk down the aisle of a fairy tale wedding we had planned for months. It was just the cover of a magazine or a headline for everyone else. Today's joke, tomorrow's trash. But for me, when Ben and I split up at the moment when I thought we were committing to each other forever, it was my first real heartbreak. It felt like my heart had been torn out of my chest. And when the realization that I wasn't going to have that fairy tale family I wanted really set in, well, that was when I really started to fall apart. People do lots of things to anesthetize themselves in moments like these. Some people do drugs, some drink, and some go out and party. I sought out comfort in another person tried to find someone who could make me feel loved and wanted in my loneliest hour. And that was the moment when Mark reappeared in my life. Porque estoy perdido, porque cambié el mundo, porque se...